Merci bien. Dear colleagues, allow me to start by thanking the entire team that worked on this important dossier over a number of years. And a special thanks, of course, to my own assistant and to the shadow rapporteurs and their teams, as well as to the excellent work by the Libe Secretariat and the colleagues in the European Commission. I've had the pleasure of working together with several very competent presidencies also, and here a special word of gratitude needs to be expressed to the Luxembourg Presidency for their enormous efforts on this dossier, without which I doubt that we would be standing here today. Dear colleagues, competitiveness is all about attracting excellent intellectuals from all over the world to come to the European Union and give their contribution in our different member states. The excellent researchers, entrepreneurs and students of the world will help us develop the growing competitive business of tomorrow. In doing so, they will be the ones to bring economic growth, employment and social progress to our economies and societies. For far too long, this continent has crippled itself completely unnecessarily, imposing bureaucracy and hinders on creative and productive minds that only want to give their contribution to our societies. Let me give you some concrete examples. When we started working on this directive, my home country, Sweden, had a system where graduated researchers, doctors, engineers and others that had received a PhD from outside Europe got 14 days to basically leave the country once they have completed their studies or their research projects. Instead of, of putting use to the knowledge and experience of these people that we had helped to educate and invested a lot of money for. We pushed them away and most of them went to other places in the world, to the US, to Canada, Australia, and there gave their contributions to the societies. With the directive we are about to vote tomorrow, all master students as well as researchers will have the possibility now to stay up to nine months in the EU to apply for jobs, start a business after they have concluded their studies or research. The mobility regime for students will be greatly improved by the new directive. Students will be able to move from day one with a simple notification before they needed a full application. As for researchers, mobility is also improved with the extension of short-term mobility up to six months compared with three months before. The minimum time that students are allowed to work will also be increased from 10 hours to 15 hours a week. Before the revision of the directive, the entry into, into the EU of family members of researchers was previously fully discretional to member states and they had absolute no right to intra-EU mobility and no right to access the labour market. The present proposals constitutes a major step forward by ensuring that family members can easily accompany researchers to Europe and they are allowed to work. This is very important for the attractivity of the European universities when they are competing to attract the best minds from all over the world. Finally, the scope of the directive will be increased. Trainees are now added as a mandatory category and European volunteer service volunteers are added mandatory and au pairs as an optional category. It should be noted that this is actually the first time ever that we grant protection to au pairs through an EU instrument. Before the re review, un unremunerated trainees were optional, they are now covered. In these days, when we talk mostly about migration in terms of migration policy, I think it is especially important that we manage to conclude on a major dossier which promotes legal migration to EU. We need far, far more of this in days to come, and I hope that we can continue to be ambitious in this regard. Thank you once again to everyone that has contributed to this great success.